Okay, two very different uh, viewpoints here. Um, Matthew Olson, when he was director of the National Counterterrorism Center, said that the NSA was a national treasure. And some people regard Snowden as a hero. A hero. He's actually got a deanship at a Scottish university, which he can't take, of course. Um, what's your view about uh, his impact and the importance of the NSA, um, both of you? Individually. So I, I think the NSA plays an important role. I think it helps keep us safe. I think it um, has incredible capabilities and that with those incredible capabilities come a lot of responsibility. Um, I also think that the legal regime under which it operates is far too permissive, particularly with respect to the rights of people outside the United States. When you look at the um, the way the NSA has approached surveillance. Um, take take the, uh, uh, the 702 program, for example. What are the criteria for listening in on a person outside the United States? It's interesting, if that person comes into the United States, you actually have to prove they're an agent of a foreign power, even though they're a foreigner. You know, most foreigners are not agents of foreign powers. They're just, they're like <coughs> us. Uh, they have the same relationship we have to our government. Um, but if they are abroad, you don't have to prove anything like that. You're not in front of any judge. All you got to do is believe that they're abroad and not have information that they're Americans. And then under the executive order that governs the surveillance that the NSA does, the mere fact that they have activities, any activity of a foreign person is, of, is defined as foreign intelligence information that's subject to this collection. They don't like that. It shouldn't surprise us that they don't like that. And the consequence is that there's a lot of pressure coming from abroad for us to refine our surveillance. And I think it would be healthy for us to have a more refined surveillance uh, regime. I agree, and the government ju did just that. In the s aftermath of the Snowden disclosures in 2014, the president issued a presidential policy that essentially uh, tightened up the rules for privacy protections for non-US persons overseas. Um, that, that exists today. It's, it's increased the protections. There's no doubt, I don't think Greg would disagree with me, that US persons or people in the United States are entitled to certain constitutional protections that are not afforded to people who are overseas. And, you know, we can talk about uh, the, the value of government uh, surveillance of non-U.S. persons overseas. It's of exceptional value. It's of exceptional value when they are operating overseas, and it's ex of exceptional value when they are plotting an attack inside the United States. You know, Greg before was talking about the Section 702 program, which is a content program, so it's collecting the content of communications. It's targeting non-US persons overseas. And, and what he mentioned, which is true, um, is it can also collect the communications when the person overseas is communicating with someone in the United States. We have to ask ourselves whether we're comfortable with that. I'm perfectly comfortable with it. Why? Because I'm very interested if someone from Yemen is talking to someone in France. I'm very interested if someone in Yemen is talking to someone in, um, in Spain. I'm really interested if that same terrorist target is talking to someone in Boston. That's the time where I'm most interested in them communicating. And it seems kind of silly if it's at that moment that we turn off the listening See, device. That, but that, the problem <coughs> is that's not really, that's the example that um, uh, intelligence folks like to use. And it makes sense. The problem is that most intelligence surveillance is not looking for terrorism. It's not, it's not the case that when uh, the government goes and says, okay, we're gonna start listening, it's always listening for terrorism. It could be the case, for example, that the government would listen in on um, foreigners abroad when it had a national security reason to do so that was rather tightly defined, even the PPD-28 purposes. But that's not what happens, because that's not the rule. The rule is you can collect in bulk on people outside the United States just because that's where they are. 
that's it. That doesn't seem like a very good criterion for me. PPD 28 was about the back end. It gave them some help on the back end. When it comes to collection on the front end, it's not helpful. And that's, that's why they, I think, have legitimate objections.